Okay, let's go ahead and solve this nice little algebra inequality problem. And uh, typically, uh, you study inequalities after you learn how to solve equations. So if you're taking some sort of algebra course or pre-algebra course, you'll be studying inequalities again uh, after you solve equations. You know, now it might be some particular chapter or unit if you look in your course because you need to know uh, all the techniques to solve equations before you get into inequalities. Now, when you study inequalities, there's basically two types you uh, study at the Algebra 1 level, pre-algebra, Algebra 1 level, certainly the Algebra 2 levels. Uh, the first type is called a linear inequality, and then the second type is called a compound inequality, and that's what we're dealing with here. Okay, so my question to you is, can you solve and graph this compound inequality? Now, what is a compound inequality? Well, basically, a compound inequality is like two inequality problems in one. You know you're dealing with a compound inequality if you see this word, and, or, the word, or. Okay, so if you're doing inequality problems and it says, and, or, something like this, or it's using the word, or, you're likely dealing with a compound inequality problem. But let's go ahead and read uh, the question here. It says, two, uh, 8x plus 2 is greater than 10 and at the same time it's less than 20. So again, this is a compound inequality problem. If you know how to solve this thing, put that answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct result and graph in just one moment. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. It is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm going to tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with mathematics. Please do not give up. If you're struggling and frustrated, listen, I get it, but let me tell you the path forward. These are the three things you need in order to be successful in math. One, you got to be willing to work hard. So if you've been trying to take shortcuts, you know, like I'm looking for the easy way out, just give me the uh, cliff notes, give me the shortcuts. Listen, we're all looking for shortcuts, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna tell you uh, the real honest truth. There are no shortcuts to learn math. There's just too much information. Okay, so uh, if you're willing to work hard, that's the first step. If you're not willing to work hard, well, you're gonna continue to struggle, unfortunately. All right, so that's the first thing you need: a strong work ethic. The second thing you need is some encouragement. Okay, again, this goes to those of you that are, are having a tough time. Or for those of you that are doing well and then you run into some problems, you need someone telling you there is a path forward. Not only can you pass your class, you can excel in math, okay? Uh, so you need some encouragement so you don't give up. But the third most important thing you need is great math instruction, okay? So whoever you're learning from or whatever you're learning from, if you don't understand the instruction and you're con totally confused when someone's talking to you or whatever you're reading, well, then you're never going to learn, right? See, math is a very technical subject and it can be taught in a very technical way, but that's not going to really, that's not the best way to teach math, okay? Because when things are taught in a very technical, esoteric way, it confuses a lot of people and it's really unnecessary. The way I like to teach math is to explain things in an easy to understand way so all students can get what's uh, you know, going on without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that has math on it that you're getting ready for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students take average notes. A lot of students don't take any notes, okay? If you want to be truly great at math, you have to take great math notes. This is so, so important. So start improving your notes, but in the meantime, you can use my notes if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the solution to this compound inequalities. Of course, I'm going to explain more about compound inequalities in a second. But here is the solution, okay? So x is greater than 1 or uh, and at the same time less than 9 fourths, all right? So this is the solution. So notice I'm saying the word and, okay? So let's just kind of repeat this uh, again. x is greater than 1 and less than 9 fourths. 
and we can um, actually graph this solution. So anytime you're dealing with inequalities, uh, you need to uh, be able to graph this solution. Let me give you an easy example. If I say x is greater than 3, what is the solution to this inequality? Well, it's all numbers that are greater than uh, 3. Okay, we're not going to list out all the numbers, right? Like 4, 5, 6. I mean, that would take us infinitely long. Both of you and I don't have that kind of time. So a good way to represent the solution uh, to an inequality is by using a graph. So in this particular uh, inequality x is greater than 3, we would simply just put a 3 right here, an open circle, and then put an arrow like so. This represents all the numbers that are greater than 3 but not equal to. Okay. Now, let me show you this uh, graph to this uh, particular uh, or particular problem here. So you're going to have 1 and 9 fourths. You're going to have open circles at each of those uh, points, and then you're going to have a kind of a connecting line between those circles. Now, some of you that are studying inequalities might be using uh, parentheses and brackets like so. So the um, uh, equivalent answer here, if you're using this notation, would be parenthesis, parenthesis, and then a line like so. Okay, but at these same points, one and nine fourths. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving yourself a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and families how good you are at compound inequalities. A nice job. All right, so again, that simple example I just gave you, X is greater than uh, three. Actually, let's kind of spruce this, spruce this up here. If I gave you a problem like two X is greater than eight, this is an example of a basic linear inequality. Okay, what we're dealing with here, again, is a compound inequality. Those inequalities that have the word and, or, or in them. Okay, now, um, as I indicated in the beginning of this uh, video, you need to know how to solve basic linear equations in order to tackle um uh, in linear inequality and compound inequality problems. Let me just state this real quick because we don't have this situation in this problem, but here is the deal. If I'm going to solve this basic linear inequality right here, I'm going to think of this as like the equation 2x is equal to 8. Okay, and how do I solve for x? Well, I'm going to simply dividing both sides of the equation by 2, so x is equal to 4. Well, we're effectively, we're going to be doing the same steps here. We're just going to have our inequality symbol like so. But there is a huge, huge thing you need to be aware of. If you have a negative number right here, like a negative um, coefficient, all right, and you divide both sides of the equation or multiply, not the equation, excuse me, both, if you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, here is the deal. You see this inequality symbol right here? You need to flip it, okay? You need to reverse it. So this would be x is gr uh, greater than negative 4, all right? So um, again, a lot to cover here about inequalities. I'm not going to be able to get to all this uh, in this one little video. If you need help with this stuff, I'm going to direct you towards my pre-algebra and algebra 1 courses. I fully teach all of this and much, much more. Okay, so I just wanted to kind of preface this by saying, uh, talking about this negative uh, uh, situation, because this is really important when you're dealing with inequalities. We're just not dealing with it in this particular problem. Okay, so the first thing we need to do in this problem is translate it into an actual uh, um, uh, inequality where we're using variables, right? We actually have an um, kind of official compound inequality. So let's just go ahead and read it again. 8x plus 2 is greater than, okay? So let's just make sure we understand the signs here. This is the less than sign because it looks like an L. This is the greater than sign, but just remember the uh, when we're talking about inequalities, think of this thing as like an alligator. Let me kind of uh, open this up here. All right, so I know this is kind of a crazy uh, metaphor, but here, think of inequality symbols as an alligator. And here's our little alligator. Okay, here's my uh, crazy little alligator. The alligator is always going to want to eat the bigger value. Okay, so if um, you have one and two and you want to put in uh, the correct inequality symbol when you're comparing these two numbers, well, the alligator is going to want to eat the bigger symbol. Okay, so that would be appropriate. All right, so just remember that as well. Okay, so 
x plus 2 is greater than 10. So I want to put this um, x plus 2 right here. If it's greater than 10, I need to have my alligator eating kind of uh, 8x plus 2. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm using a less than symbol because I am saying uh, 8, 8x plus 2 is greater than 10. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying 10 is less than 8x plus 2, but you have to interpret that with the less than symbol. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense to you. So 8x plus 2 is greater than 10, and at the same time, it's less than 20. Okay, so 8x plus 2 here is less than 20. 20 would be greater than that. So that's the first thing you need to do is to translate um, all these sentences into an actual compound inequality. All right, so hopefully you understand that. Now, the next step here is going to be um, simplifying this compound inequality. Basically, our objective is to get x in the middle. It's kind of like solving for x, and whatever step we need to take, we need to take on both this on this side and this side of the inequality. So let's go and take a look at what we need to do right now. All right, so again, you kind of think of as if you were solving for x in the middle. So the first thing we need to do is subtract 2 from both sides of the inequality. So you can see the work right there. And when we do this, we're going to have 10 minus 2, which of course is 8. And then we're going to be left with 8x in uh, the middle. And then we have 20 minus 2, which of course is 18. All right, so if I was t uh, solving for x, what's the uh, last step I need to do? I need to divide everything by 8, right? I need to divide this. Uh, I have 8x, so to get x, i got to divide by 8. So i got to divide this by 8, i got to divide this by 8. Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. So when we do that, again, notice here, I'm not dealing with any negative numbers. If I was dividing by negative 8, all these inequality symbols would reverse. But we're not dealing with that situation, but it's important that you know that. Okay, so we got 8 divided by 8, which of course is 1. 8 divided by 8 here is 1 or 1x. And then we have 18 over 8, which we can reduce as, uh, as the fraction 9 fourths, right? 2 goes into 18, 9, and 2 goes into 8, 4. All right, so that it leaves us with our final answer right here. So this is perfectly acceptable, but again, you always want to um, be able to graph the solution to inequalities. So you're going to be uh, asked to do this if you're taking any sort of algebra course. It's important that you not only know um, how to graph the solutions to inequalities, but you need to be able to interpret the graph and be able to actually write the inequality. So again, we're dealing with a compound inequality. X is greater than 1. All x's that are greater than 1, okay, well, then you kind of uh, kind of interpret this solution as this. All numbers x that are greater than 1 and at the same time less than 9 fourths, those are, that is the solution to this compound inequality. All right, so um, first of all, when you go to graph this, you're dealing with an improper fraction, 9 fourths. So just in case you're like, well, what, what, you know, how much is 9 fourths? You can just turn this into a mixed uh, number if you want to, just so you have a sense of where it's at on the number line. So 9 fourths is about 2 and 1 fourth. Well, it's precisely 2 and 1 fourths. Just take that 9 divided by 4, and you can see right there uh, we have 2 and 1 fourths. So what you want to do is you want to draw out a number line when you're graphing this stuff. Draw yourself a nice line. And then I like to always put zero in here, okay? Now you don't have to put zero. I like to put zero as a reference point. And then you're gonna use, you're gonna um, look at these two um, uh, points here, okay? Or to these two values. So we have one, so I'm gonna put one. Now if this is one, right, on my scale, this would be like two, this would be like three. So I'm just kinda trying to make this equal distance. So right here, yeah, I'm going to put 9 fourths, which of course is 2 and 1 fourths. So I can kind of put that extra mesh. And that's not necessary. You can just go on directly into 9 fourths. That's perfectly fine. Just a little kind of additional tip. Okay, so here, the, uh, here is the deal, okay, when it comes to graphing inequalities. When you're dealing with less than or greater than, you're going to have open circles at these points. If you have a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, you're going to close in the circle. Now, um, again, alternatively, for the open circle, these would be parentheses for those of you that, for those of you out there that are learning um, inequalities with parentheses, and the closed circle would be equivalent to brackets. Both are pretty common notation, so you need to understand that. So, what does that mean, though? It means that one, okay, we're talking about all numbers here 
that are greater than one. So just, you know, you can get super close to one, like 1 1.0000001 is part of the solution. It just can't be one. That's why you leave it as an open circle. But if my answer was this, all numbers that are greater than or equal to one, I would close in that circle, okay? So if we're using the bracket and parentheses system, this would be a bracket like so, and then we would go to nine fourths and we would have a parenthesis. Okay. So again, you know, uh, you know, a lot to cover here and I'm trying to, you know, squeeze in a lot in this one particular video. If you're confused about any of this stuff, you need to go ahead and check out like my pre-algebra or algebra one course. All right. So that is the graph. Let's go ahead and take a look at the same graph using the parentheses system. Okay. So these would be the parentheses right here. Um, so if you had this as your graph, that would be perfectly acceptable as well. All right, let's um, wrap this up by just reviewing some big picture um, concepts about compound inequality. So again, remember I said that compound inequalities are those inequalities that uh, have the word and or the word or. Okay, so anytime you have a situation where it's and, like the problem we dealt with here, right, x plus 2 is greater than 10 and less than 20, I want you to think of and. When you hear that word hand, and, think of the word hand. Now you're probably saying, oh boy, this math teacher, he's been teaching math so long, he's lost his mind. What is he talking about? Well, what I want you to remember, and, I want you to think of hand, I want you to think of like handlebars on a bike. Right, so here's my little sketch of my bike. Here's the front tire. Here's the here's the handlebars. So the graph of an and inequality is going to be like handlebars, right? It's going to be one line, and there's going to be some endpoints like this. So here, this particular uh, problem x is greater than two and less than ten. This would be the graph. There would be two. This would be ten. So it's one connected line. And think hand or handlebars. Now. There are there is another uh, flavor of compound inequalities, and that's ones that deal with the word or. Okay, so let me just read this to you real quick, and then we'll talk about what I'm talking about here. This is x is less than two, or all x's that are less than two, all numbers that are less than two, or all numbers that are greater than ten. So we're using the a word or here. So when you see the word or, I want you to think of the word ors. Okay, now ORs, if you don't know, there are those cool little things like this that you put in your little rowboat right here. And when you're in the water, that's how you propel yourself. These are called ORs. You probably knew that. But just in case you didn't know, we're talking about these little paddles, right? These are called ORs. So, um, you know, your graph's going to look like this. Okay, they're going to look like ORs, all right? It, kinda, it doesn't look like a handlebar. It's going to look like ORs. So when you're dealing with a compound inequality and it says ORs, your graph, your final graph should be something like this. When you're dealing with a compound inequality and you're dealing with the word and, you should be dealing with a graph uh, that looks like this. There are a few little exceptions, especially if we got some um, negative um, scenarios going on. But in general, this is the way these graphs are going to look. Look. Okay, so I covered a lot of uh, in this one video, but um, probably not doing complete justice to everything because you really have to get into these problems in much more detail. And the only way you're really going to build up skill in this is to practice, practice, practice. It's not enough to watch me do a problem like, oh, I understand what you're what you said. That's good. Okay, that's a good starting point. But you, in order for you to um, get this into your long-term memory to you know retain this knowledge to have the skill to be able to do these problems you have to practice on your own so as i indicated in the beginning of this video right there are no shortcuts in math but you can be as successful as you want to be as long as you're committed and you have great instruction that's my part okay my passion is to try to teach hopefully I like my teacher style if that's the case then i would uh, love nothing more than to be your math teacher right but find someone if it's not me find someone that you like and understand their instruction and then put in the effort and you can be as successful as you want to be. All right, so if this little video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.